Again, when I've done talks before around this subject, this particular subject of happiness and positive psychology, there sometimes comes a bit of resistance from people. People will say that this idea of positivity, positive psychology, these tools and techniques that are being taught, is akin to just putting a smile on your face and pretending everything's okay. Or burying your head in the sand and pretending there's not sadness and badness in the world out there. Pretending it's not there. And this is a common misunderstanding. What it is about, it's about cultivating inner joy. Cultivating a natural, harmonious bias towards a positive mindset. And that leads to a natural, unconscious bias towards a positive view of ourselves, of others, and the world outside of ourselves. Appreciation for our lives, appreciation for each moment, increased love, better relationships, more patience, more understanding, more compassion. So it's not about pushing the negative emotions away. It's about cultivating a mind which is biased towards noticing the beauty, the wonder, the awe, the things that really matter in life and should be at the front of our mind most of the time. Whereas what tends to happen is what's at the front of our mind is the stresses, the hassles, the worries, the concerns. That's usually at the front of our minds, isn't it? When really what we're doing through this course and tools and techniques is to flip that around. So at the front of our mind, we start filtering out negative thoughts, filtering out the negative emotions and allowing in the positive thoughts, the enhancing thoughts, the empowering thoughts, the positive feelings, the feelings of beauty and appreciation for our love, loved ones, our life. It's also not about the absence of sadness. Again, this is a common misunderstanding. So it's not about removing sadness from one's life completely. That's impossible. And if you did that, as I've said before, it would make you into a psychopath that doesn't experience any emotions whatsoever. What it does do is it allows us to have this reservoir of contentment, joy, happiness within us. So on the one hand, we have a high level of experience, a high level of happiness and joy within our lives. And when something sad does come along, it's going to dip that level, but not deplete our happiness and our joy and our contentment, our life satisfaction, our love and kindness and compassion completely. It chips a little bit out of it, but we've got a stack of it that's there helping support us through those tough times. Whereas for most of us, we're way down here. Our happiness fluctuates at the bottom, okay? Yeah, sure, we have some good times on holiday. Then it goes up and down. We're back to work, back to the mundane. Then we have something really quite tragic or sad that happens in our lives. We're gone. And this is when people have breakdowns. And this is all tied in with stress, the cycle of stress, the, the evolution of stress. And I'll come on to this in a short, in a short while. But for now, understand that this is what we're doing. It's not about removing sadness. It's about building resilience through our own actions, through our own techniques, through our own mental wiring, 